Iconic surf brand Rip Curl has come under fire lately for not only letting go of one of its most famous faces, but also using a transgender woman as a promotional contributor. Rip Curl featured trans surfer Sasha Lowison on its Instagram page last week, only a few months after cutting ties with one of the most world-famous female surfers, Bethany Hamilton, over her views of transgender athletes competing in sport. This is the same champion surfer, Bethany Hamilton, who lost her arm in a shark attack in 2003 and had been riding with Rip Curl since 1999. Hamilton herself has slammed the decision on X, writing, male-bodied athletes should not be competing in female sports, period. Now, as you can imagine, Rip Curl faced enormous backlash over this, especially in Australia, where hashtag boycott Rip Curl was trending. One tweet from outspoken swimmer Riley Gaines read, you mean to tell me Rip Curl dropped Bethany Hamilton for opposing men surfing in the women's league, then picked up a male surfer who surfs in the women's league as a women's ambassador? Crazy. This tweet featured a tombstone that read, Rest in peace, Rip Curl died today after deciding that a man makes a better woman with the dates September 1969 to January 25th, 2024. Guys, what did you think about this? Because this sparked a bit of a, a wave of backlash, especially in Australia, but it didn't a come wave. here. A ah, wave. Uh, very good, There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing is, it's interesting watching these kind of hierarchies of oppression cannibalise each other. So I didn't think... Because the thing is, you would think that lady um, who, who basically had her arm chewed off by, by a shark mm. would be at the, t like the top of the totem pole for, for I don't know, the, 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 the oppression Olympics. But then she's been beaten out by a man. So I mean, it's it's really it's really interesting. You you kind of see who's who's fighting it out. I mean, I think I don't think this will end the same way Budweiser did because mm. Budweiser's main like sort of customer base are men. Yeah. Right. With Rip Curl, unfortunately, they have a mix of both men and women. Um, but I do so, think. You mean unfortunately? I mean, I'm unfortunate <laughs> because you know why? Like pesky both, women. You know why? Because the people co-signing this nonsense are mainly women. Yeah. Right. The people that people ask me why aren't women more outraged by having biological men in women's sports is because of other women, deluded women that are happy to virtue signal and make themselves feel good, like they're doing something, mm -hmm. you know, progressing the world. Mm. Uh, so I, I don't think it will happen the same way. I do think they will see a hit in sort of mm. sales, but I don't think it will be as catastrophic. And I think yeah. because it's such a well-known brand in the surfing world, you know, you, it's, I don't think it's as easily replaceable as beer. I agree. And it's also not on the same spectrum of, of Budweiser. Bud Light yeah. is the, was the biggest beer in the United States, whereas this is a and in many surf brand working in class men. Yeah, a hundred percent. It yeah. went against everything that their target market yeah. actually care for. What do you reckon, JJ? Well, the CEO of Rip Curl is a woman, so this is this is women against women. against women. Yeah, and uh, this like if I if I said to you now, okay, I, I'm called JJ, but I identify as a woman. Yeah. You're going to be like, no, JJ. Yeah, a Japanese man. woman called Miyako. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, there you go. Like it, it's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. But because this trans woman, and this trans woman, still looks, she still looks How like a man. Did you see her? Her bicep, it looks honestly, like a man, yeah. she looked like she would knock she, you she's out. She's still built like a, like a dude. Yeah. She has... I think that's probably going to be the most like outrageous <laughs> part when you're in this <laughs> yeah. surfing competition. You're like, and yeah. why can't win? What happens, one arm, what first of all. The, yes. What happens with the promo? Like, do they airbrush the bulge? Like, I, I don't know if I don't know I don't know if the if the, I mean she, what in the up. hell she might she she made a post up but for all she, she physically she still has mm. the the body of a man the bits yeah. yeah she has the body of a man but the, I'm talking about the muscle and the strength and the stamina mm. she has an unfair advantage so for for a woman to stand up and say crazily men shouldn't compete in the women's yeah. the women's uh, arena yeah. Yeah. and then she, essentially she gets dropped and loses out because mm. of that 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 is literally I, a mad world I understand it is a mad world and I think that you know everyone's entitled to do what they want but. Surfing is one of those sports where in the last 10 to 15 years, it has been an effort for women yeah, to, to even get in. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm Australian with them. Like, I know that, it, like, the surfing community has gone above and beyond to try and make it such a female-dominated sport to get up there with the men. So mm -hmm. I think that if you have the... If Rip Curl, one of the most iconic surf brands in Australia, yeah. has chosen to... it was I wouldn't say it was replacing because we can't confirm that it was a replacing, but to kind of do that instead of someone who had been with the brand since 1999, there's an actual movie around yeah. Bethany Hamilton where she actually is getting signed by yeah. this company and then to switch gears and give paid, you know, promotion to... We don't know if it's paid, but promotion yeah. to someone who I think is the only transgender Australian surfer. Yeah. And that, but Rip could have deleted it now, right? Yeah, they've yeah. deleted it. Yeah, so but you know, the thing is, that... I feel like these are the kinds of things that 
I don't want to say stoke the, the culture wars, but it's because it's rooted in arrogance. I don't have a problem that this clearly male looking individual identifies as, I don't care what they identify as, mm -hmm. but it's the arrogance to try and force the world mm. to accept you on those terms. Mm. Yeah. If most trans people were like, look, we identify as, I don't know, a pizza, but we're not going to force ourselves to try and go into women's bathrooms or into women's sports and all of that. No, we will never be having these conversations because most people genuinely don't care. We have our own problems, mm. we have taxes to pay. Um, but it's, it's this arrogance <laughs> of, oh, you must feel like this, this man with all the bits and the, the corresponding apparatus uh, is a woman. Mm. That, that's why people get angry. Yeah, especially for female athletes. Exactly. I yeah. understand it. You're at a disadvantage already. Yeah. You know, we've tried so hard to... Yeah. Especially, like, when, when the um when the soccer World Cup, the female soccer World yeah. Cup, I was, like, the I felt like the proudest female because oh, I really? just felt... Yes, because... Did you, did you watch it? Yeah, I, watched, like, I watched, like, two games, but it was in Sydney. I was there. I was in yeah, Sydney. I mean, it, was, it, was, it was terrible, man. Yeah, that's not football. Was terrible. I mean, Forget you guys beat us. But it doesn't matter. I just... I was astounded. I'm like, people are going to watch female yeah. soccer players? Yeah. I mean, that the, is the amazing. Tickets, the tickets were being given away for free. Uh, I mean, I you tried, weren't there. No, I kid you not. You weren't there. You didn't see the electric crowd. I tried, honestly. My brother kicked me out of the room because I just fell over laughing. It was yeah. just... Women's it, football's terrible. terrible. It's so <laughs> bad. I saw, so Chelsea, bad. Uh, I saw Chelsea two weeks ago and I... Chelsea women. Chelsea women. Chelsea women. They they're they're as bad as the men. So they're they're, they're men. good. <laughs> they're Chelsea women's. They're good. Yeah, look, me, as a nearly 40-year-old man, me and my mates were also for it. Thank you. <laughs> we can also beat the Chelsea women's football team. Yeah. Really? I'll make that pledge to you now. We're, we're, if you're we're, watching we're Chelsea women's football, JJ, that's play us at football. Joke, like... I swear to God, I yeah. swear to God, okay. me and my mates would beat the Chelsea women's football team. Wow. Women's football <laughs> is not real football. It's like watching kids kicking a ball around. It's rubbish. You've got to be kidding. They're rubbish. actually really good. He's right. No, he's right. You know what I mean, I haven't grown up with football. Like, Do you know I what can it say is? soccer, so I'm going to get absolutely cancelled for this. You can tell the difference from watching it because the infrastructure is not in place because they play on pitches the same size as men. Men's right, pitches. Okay. So when they kick the ball, they have less energy, but it's supposed to travel the same mm. distance as a man's foot. But man's like, you know, man's power when he kicks. So you, it's like watching it football in slow motion, and it's so <laughs> obviously worse. <laughs> and this is the problem. At the end of the day, like, you know, I don't know if you've seen female rugby players, but they make an effort. <laughs> <laughs> but then at least they make an effort. They make an effort. Yeah. Well, guys, we're getting, we're getting somewhere. The, the takeaway from this segment is we're getting somewhere, but things like the Bethany Hamilton, yeah. Sasha Lower thing takes us, takes us back in time.